Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are looking at Sculpt GL. Now this is a free, open source, and incredibly powerful sculpting application. If you've ever used uh, Sculptress, ZBrush, Mudbox, or Blender sculpting tools, you've got an idea of what we are dealing with here. However, in this particular case, this is also browser-based. Now don't hang up, don't let that turn you off, because you can also run this completely locally as well. It just means that it was written using WebGL and JavaScript and runs in the browser. You can also create a local install, and since this is completely completely open source, you can kind of do with it whatever you want. Uh, clone it down, run it in Node, you don't need to run it on their servers or anything like that. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at Sculpt GL. Now if you've used a sculpting program in the past, you've got an idea of exactly what we were dealing with here. We have, Over here we have import and export options, you can save out to Sketchfab, um, you can export the textures including PBR workflow with metalness or roughness maps. You can import OBJ, SGL, PLY, and STL files. You can also export the same formats. It does a very good job with OBJ. That's the only one I've really tested with. And for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll start with a standard sphere. You notice there's symmetry going on here. We can turn that off or on. Up here, we've got undo, redo. Uh, you can set how much undo and redo to actually allow. Uh, you can change the background here. Uh, you've got camera controls. You've also got pressure sensitive tablet controls. Uh, you can change the UI to a couple of different languages. Um, and that's pretty much about it. It's very straightforward on the whole. Your, your tools are down here, so you go into the Sculpting and Painting tab. Your various different tools are available there. They are what you expect. There's painting tools, flatten tools, pinching tools, dragging tools, and so on. We'll start with the standard brush. As you can see, there is symmetry on. Uh, you can zoom in and out. You can orbit, no problems at all. Um, so yeah, that is your standard drawing space. And we'll just go ahead and paint. So I did not mean to orbit the camera right before there, but you see we've got symmetric painting going on. We are dealing with about 100,000 polygons in this particular case, and performance is just fine. You can change your tools here. So we have a much larger radius for our effecting, and you can see the performance is actually really quite good. And I've had this thing, I imported uh, 1.2 million polygon models, and it ran as fast and as smoothly as I would have expected. So that's your standard brush. We've also got an inflation brush kind of inflate the area you're under. Uh, you've got your intensity and uh, so on controls. You can also reverse it using the Alt key. Uh, so we've got a twist brush, like so. So we can twist out shapes like that. Uh, we have a smooth brush for smoothing out the surfaces you just, or basically healing the crevices and cracks you just made. We have a flatten brush flattens the surface in the area you're talking about. So here, let me just get that a lot bigger and you'll see it in effect. So there, if you need to make quick flat surfaces, uh, you can easily do so with the flat brush like that. Uh, we have pinch. Pinch never works the way I expect it to. And I don't, I think it's just, I don't understand pinch. I think it's for pinching in two surfaces. So I can pinch here. Anyways, I've never got pinch in any sculpting program ever. Crease I do get, it's easy. You can use it for making creases. So once again, our performance is pretty sweet. It, it's always quite good. We've got a drag brush for pulling things out in a rapid order. If you've used any sculpting program, you know exactly what we're dealing with at this point in time. Now we're getting into paint now. This is instead for painting your surface. So we're using a standard color. We can change out that color. So we can do it uh, here. We can do a full, uh, we can write the entire thing with the one. Uh, we can load in texture maps if we want, but we can use this basically as a painting surface. As you see here, you've got an albedo roughness and metallic channel. So we could also decide the amount to paint for our metal map right there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of your painting program. Again, you could also come in and bring in um, a texture map. You can import a texture map in typical common formats. And that's kind of it for painting. So we go back here now, we've got movement controls. Uh, so this is for kind of like drag, but it's move instead. Uh, we've got masking. I'm not 100% certain what masking is doing. I think this is for, actually, I'm not 100% certain on what masking is doing. It's something to do with the texturing. Uh, local scale, not not 100. Uh, okay, it's just a lo literally a local scaling option. And then we have transform, which is, I believe, for your entire object. So you see here, we're moving that way. Uh, and that's more useful when you when you're adding multiple shapes in. You can use the transform tool to move them around in your scene, and that is kind of the gist of what this tool is all about. And we've got some options down here. We've got rendering options, so we've got um, different shaders that we can use on it. So we've got a PBR, a normal shader, 
a UV shader, and a matte cap. We can also change out the matte cap. So in this case, we can go to that guy. We can red clay, skin, clay. Did I just do skin twice? Yes, I did. Or white. So you got various different matte caps available to you. Um, we can do filmic tone mapping. We can change the curvature. And that is kind of it for rendering. If you want, you can do wireframe options. You can see the wireframe that's being generated behind the scenes. We can also do flat shading. And we can set the transparency of our object. And once again, as you see, as I'm flipping through all these things, the performance is just flawless. And so being a browser tool is not really a huge detriment here. And uh, we've got multi-resolution options here. So we can go to lower and higher subdivision versions of our mesh as we're going through. And you're seeing the profound difference uh, as I'm jumping between the different levels you've got here. So we're going from 1,500, 6,000 to 25,000 to 100,000. So you can work with multiple different densities. Uh, you can do voxel remeshing like so. And we have to, so, and there's the, the new map as a result. We can also do dynamic topology changes. And that is kind of essentially it. That That is the tool in a nutshell. It is a very straightforward and well-performing sculpting tool. It works exactly as you would expect it. Uh, again, it imports OBJ files, so any of your static meshes can be brought in. It exports the OBJ, OBJ file, so you can easily bring your sculpts over to the likes of um, you know, Blender or Max or Maya or whatever for finishing, or you can export directly to a game engine. And it it's clean, it's simple, it's easy to understand. Now, obviously, if you're vested in your own tool, if you like, um, you know, Blender sculpting tools or Max's sculpting tools or Maya sculpting tools, then this may not be of any use to you. But if you are looking for a standalone sculptor, I would actually argue that Sculpt GL is a fair bit better than Sculptress at this point in time and is one of the best standalone sculpting applications out there that just happens to run in a browser, which is very much quite cool. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, of course, I will toss the, a link with all the links down below, but it is uh, the work of Stefan Genier. Sorry if I messed your name up there. A uh, bit more details of the feature set that are available here, uh, but you've got your dynamic topology, you've got voxel remeshing, you've got uh, multi-resolution sculpting as we saw in action, and we've got the various different sculpting tools and PBR vertex painting tools are built in here, and you've got your import and export of those common formats. Now, if you're interested, uh, it is an open source project. It is MIT licensed, it is up on GitHub, and I will make this link available as well. So that is SculptGL, a WebGL open source sculpting program. As I mentioned earlier on, if you want to run it um, standalone, you can do so using uh, the Yarn build system and the Electron Packager. So you can basically turn this directly into a standalone localized application. And what's cool about being written using WebGL is this will run on Linux, Mac, uh, Windows, and pretty much anything else that supports WebGL. And that's always definitely an upside there. And generally one of the big downsides is again, performance. And I'm just not seeing it here. Let's subdivide this guy. Get this subdivision, which will reach 1.6 million faces. Yeah, sure. So this might take a while. This might slow it down. All right, so we're at 1.6 million faces. Now I'm gonna orbit around. And the performance is still pretty flawless. And this is with the wireframe on, which is normally a bit of a pig, to be honest. So let's turn wireframe off. There is our object with 1.6 million faces, transparency running in the browser just fine. And let me just head on down to sculpting and we'll pick the brush. All right, so my performance is slowing down a bit, but that is still perfectly adequate performance. So, and I'm running this on a 970M. This by no means is the fastest video card even that I own. So uh, definitely one worth checking out. If you're looking for a sculpting program or if you're looking to just kill a bit of time, it's just fun to play with. I have always loved sculpting applications. Ever since I first got my hands on ZBrush many, many years ago, uh, this is just a very cool way of working. And then once again, they do have some really cool multi-resolution support in here. So you can drop the dynamic topology way down or you can remesh it down and have a much lower resolution version and it's it's just a cool app so do check that out that is sculpt gl a completely free um, uh, open sourced application for webgl based sculpting uh yeah so let me know what you think uh, is the fact that it's uh, browser based a detriment to you or do you already have your sculpting tool of choice or are you going to be checking this one out again i gotta give kudo to the author uh it's always cool to see, see stuff like this you know, available for the community so great work there stefan and yeah talk to you all later goodbye